and gentlemen and welcome back to Tech Showdown. My name is Kevin, this is my co-host Teddy, and today we're checking out the <laughs> Rappo, I'm pretty sure I'm pronouncing it right, the Rappo V800 Mechanical Gaming Keyboard. Now this thing is, uh, yeah, quite the keyboard, so let's dive straight in then with the design, because that's the first thing you notice about this thing. And wow, this thing is big, bland, and black and grayish. So, not really too much to say here. I think, oh, I don't know. I, I'm just not really liking this one at all, to be honest, guys. I think it's, um, yeah, I don't like the look of this. It's, it's plastic fantastic as well, aside from this bit of metal down here, uh, which is quite hard to tell that it actually is metal. But yeah, it's just fully plastic. I mean, it feels somewhat well built, like it's pretty sturdy, but it, it just doesn't really look that appealing um, overall. And, you know, if you turn the lighting off, uh, which we will get to later, um, all the way off like that, you know, some people might mistake this for like a high-end membrane keyboard, you know, like a $30, $40 office membrane keyboard. I'm not kidding. Like, personally, I mean, I might if I was passing by. I just, I don't know. It just doesn't look that good. The one redeeming factor, which I do have to give it because I give it to everything that's rather bland, or at least, you know, has quite bland colors to it, is that it is going to go with everything uh, in terms of if you have a color scheme for your peripherals or a color scheme for your rig, it's going to go with all of it because it's pretty much just uh, black and white. Well, some of this is kind of gray, but you get what I mean. Now let's get to the keys. This is a mechanical keyboard, but it doesn't feature Cherry MX key switches. It features the Kale Yellow switch, which, ha which is a linear switch with actuation force of 50CN, uh, similar to a Cherry MX Red. And it has been now discontinued. The yellow switch has been discontinued. Uh, it has been replaced by pretty much the exact same thing, just the color and the name change. So they're calling it the red. Now, I'm not a big fan of these kale switches so far, but I try to keep an open mind with this guy. But it's still, it's just not that good. And what's even worse is that I hate that now they, they copy the Cherry MX. They name them the same, which is like, you know, fine. Well, they're just trying to copy the Cherry MX switch, but it catches consumers out because they put on the box like red switch, so people just instantly think, oh, it's got a Cherry MX switch in it, and then they, and they get home, it has a kale switch in it, or it has a blue, you know, they say blue switch, and it has a kale blue, so it's just, yeah. Anyways, uh, these switches, as you guys know, I'm not the biggest fan of reds, but these ones are just even worse. Um, this is it just feels loose would be the best way to put it just doesn't feel like it's well made I am just completely not a fan this is absolutely one of the worst mechanical keyboards I have ever used honestly it is just not good at all I didn't find the timing experience on it to be good um, I didn't like it I've used plenty of Cherry MX red keyboards as you guys know and although I may not particularly like Cherry MX Reds, I can still tell that it's a, you know, the switch is somewhat nice to use and there is an appeal for those people out there that do like using them. So yeah, that's just not good at all. The keycaps though felt pretty good um, and the overall layout of the keyboard is also quite good. So it, it scores two points there, but the, the switches are, yeah, very, very bad. Now let's get to the lighting. And not much to say here either. So you can see it just has its white backlighting. Um, and that's it. What can you adjust on it? Does it have any special modes? Any more colors? No colors and no modes. What you can do is, uh, yeah, we can turn the brightness up. There we go. Full brightness there. So that's fine. And uh, that's about it. So hope you enjoy it. That's all you get. Very boring. And uh, there's quite a bit of light bleed as well, which isn't ideal. And the brightness goes, I don't know, kind of averagely high, so th th that's alright too. I should mention now as well, just because I might forget, that it does have a braided cable, if that counts for anything. <laughs> now the, to the software. So, the software is uh, kind of like a joke. Um... Uh, you can just do macros and that's about it. I mean, you can set the polling rate and then you can set some 
lighting on the keyboard, like if you want one area to be brighter than the other or something. I don't know. This is pretty much no point in actually even having this software. When you think of how much customizability there is on some of the Ducky keyboards, namely the one we just tested, the uh, Ducky 69 edition, and that doesn't have any software. It's all done um, using functions on the keyboard itself. They could have done the exact same thing here. Up in this top right corner, they have some dedicated keys. There's brightness key, there's a uh, mute and unmute, windows lock key, and a macro key. As you know, as you see, there's a few, there's five macro keys down the side here too. So they could have just left it like that. Um, but, you know, whatever. They, there's the software, it's just pointless, and, you know, if you want to do macros with it, you know, sure, be my guest, and that's pretty much all it's going to be good for. So, that brings me to the overall. So, design-wise... I don't like it. It's plain. It's nothing good. It's I don't like anything about the design except the, the fact that it'll go with anything. So that's great. The mechanical key switches, the KO, KO yellow switches, are horrible. Uh, the worst I've ever used. I don't like them at all. I'm not a fan of these KO switches either. Um, so my personal recommendation to you guys is always just go with Cherry Max. So they're the best. That's all there is to be said. The lighting is pretty boring, it may as well not even have any, um, it doesn't have, you know, there's no color, there's no settings, you know, features or anything, so there's that. And uh, this thing's coming with a price tag as well. What's that, Teddy? They should change the name from Rapu to Crapu. Mmm, Teddy's right on this one. <laughs> this thing is just, at least with the Poseidon Z. We tested that, and I said the kale blue switches are pretty just, you know, the same thing. They feel loose. They're just, it's like the tolerances just aren't there. Um, at least that was cheap, which is good. This thing's coming in at $180 in New Zealand. $180. That is ridiculous. So I 100% don't recommend this at all. When you can play, uh, go over to Playtech, and you can pick up a Ducky Shine Zero... For uh, $20 less, coming in at $159 for a Shine Zero. And the Shine Zero, you get a Cherry Mix key switch, you know, all the ones you want, blue, brown, uh, red, and black, you can pick. And also, it only has single color LEDs in it, but at least you can pick the color, you can get like, you know, red ones, blue, you know, whatever. So, there's actually colored lighting on the Ducky as well, and it's $20 less, and you're getting actual Cherry Mix keys. It's so much better to just go with the Ducky Shine Zero over this guy for, you know, this thing is just not good. I 100% don't recommend it. And that's going to end this video of the worst mechanical keyboard I have ever tested. It goes to the Rapu V800. Now, I thank you guys for watching. Please subscribe to Tech Showdown if you want to see more videos like this in the future. Well, I don't want to put myself through this again, but you know what I mean. Like the video, and I'll see you guys next time.